Get out your nitrous, strap on your blood bag, and buckle up. I'm Steve Tassie, the board game guy, and I'm here to teach you to play Thunder Road Vendetta. This video will tackle the base game only. Part two of the tutorial will explain all the expansion content that's available for the game as well. If you watch my video comparing Thunder Road Vendetta to the original Thunder Road from 1986, you'll have the gist of how the game works, but this video will explain all the rules in specific. Thunder Road is the Ram and Wreck board game in which the goal is to race a ram and wreck your opponent's cars until you are the first across the finish line or the last player with any working vehicles on the road. Let's look at the game components and get the game set up. The boards. There are five road boards called chapters. They are double-sided with an A side and a B side. They are different configurations of paved road, desert sand, off-road mud, impassable rock formations, and more. The name of the road segment is at the top of the board, along with its chapter number and A or B, denoting whether it's the front or the back. The boards jigsaw together. There are more boards in the expansion content, but we will stick to the introductory five boards for this video. Now, take board number one, and place it on the table. It's your call as to whether or not you want 1A or 1B side up. Next, you're going to shuffle the remaining four boards and randomly pick two of them to put in front of the first board. Again, it is your call as to whether or not you want the A side or the B side up. You now have three road segments connected in a row, starting with road one. You're gonna put the remaining two roads aside for now. Next up are the hazard tokens. They are red on one side with the hazard triangle. That's the same symbol that appears on board spaces. And there are several different types of hazard token that you are going to run into. You've got wrecks and mines and oil slicks and plain old paved road, muddy spots. There are more hazards in the expansion content, but we're gonna to stick to just these. You're gonna take the 26 basic hazard tiles, you're going to give them a shuffle, and then you're going to place one randomly on each of the hazard triangles on boards front and middle. Now on the back board, the last, you know, your starting board, there will be triangles that are marked for various player counts. So only put triangles down for the player count that you are using. So in a two, three, or four player game, those two will get spots. In a two or three player game, those two will get spots. And if it's just two of you, those two will get hazards. Place the rest of the hazard tiles near the board for later on when new road segments come into play. Next up, we have the damage tokens. They are black on the back with a red exclamation mark, and on the front, they tell you what type of damage they are. Every time a car takes damage, you will draw one of these, reveal it, and resolve its effect. There's dent, blast off, skid, dazed, and shrapnel. More damage tokens are introduced in the expansion content, but these are the basic ones. Make a stack of all of these shuffled and place them near the board for play. Now you're gonna need the FX dice. There are five in the base game and a sixth one from the expansion content. To play the base game, you need the road die, the stunt die, the direction die, the slam die, and the shooting die. Place these next to the board. You will also want to place the four wrecked car tokens near the board as well. The board is now finished being set, so it is time to get the players set up with their individual components. Each player will pick a color, white, blue, green, or orange, and they will take the four dice, the chopper, the three vehicles, and the dashboard cards of their color. 
There are two other team options in the expansion content, red for the big rig and yellow for the final five motorcycle gang, but they are special vehicles that will be covered in part two of this tutorial. Each player lays out their dashboard pieces in front of them, like so. Keeps their dice and their chopper near to hand and places their three vehicles down at the starting line not on the board, just in front of it. The command part of your dashboard shows you the four special commands that you can choose from each round. Airstrike, Nitro, Drift, and Repair. Maximum each player can issue a maximum of one command per round. You will have to assign one of your dice to the command that you are using. Each of your three cars has its own dashboard segment with room for a movement die, as well as a spot for a coasting die. The bottom of the dashboard has room for two damage tokens. A car with no damage tokens is as functional as it can be. With one token, a car still runs, but it is halfway to death. With two tokens on it, a car is inoperable. It can be fixed with the repair command, but until it is, it cannot move or shoot. Some situations such as driving into an impassable space or driving off the edge of the board will completely eliminate a car from the game, regardless of how damaged it was. Now that everyone has their vehicles, dice and dashboards and the board is laid out, you are set up to play. Play takes place over a series of rounds. A round consists of players each taking one turn at a time until they've all taken three turns. When the last player has taken their third turn, the round is over and a new one begins. To start the first round of the game, every player rolls their four dice and the player who has the lowest combined total of dice is the start player and they will roll the road die. If there is a tie for lowest total, then everyone will roll the dice again. White has rolled the lowest, so they get the road die. They will roll it and place it next to the board for everyone to see. The start player will take their first turn and then play will pass clockwise around the table. On your turn, you will Number one, assign one die to a car that you haven't moved yet this round. This is mandatory unless you don't have any more cars that haven't moved. If all your cars have moved or are inoperable slash eliminated, you will assign a movement die to a card's coasting spot. Number two, you will assign a die to a command action if you haven't already used one this round. And that's optional. Then you will resolve the command that you've given, if any, and move the vehicle that you assign the movement die to, mandatory. Your car must use the full amount of its movement unless it slams into another car. As the result of moving your car, you may have to reveal and resolve a hazard or resolve a slam attack against another car. And if you are in position to, after moving, you will resolve a shooting attack against an enemy vehicle. It must be noted that your guns are not loaded on the first round of the game, so there is no shooting from cars or choppers on the first round. Once you complete your turn, the next player goes until everyone has taken their third turn and the round ends. To start the next round, start player position passes one player clockwise and everyone rolls their dice again with the new start player rolling the road die. Assigning dice. When it's your turn to act, you will place one of your dice on one of your cars and possibly one on one of your command actions. If you have one or more cars that haven't moved yet this round, you will put a die on the space at the center of that car's dashboard. The value of the die is how many movement points you are granting to the car. Different terrain types have different movement costs. We'll get to those in a bit, but suffice to say, the bigger the number, the farther the car will drive. If all of your operational cars have already moved this round, you will place the die in the coast spot for one of your operational cars. This means that your car will coast one space. No car can coast more than twice in a single round. That's why there are two little dots next to the coast symbol 
on your dashboards. If you were assigning a die to a car that hasn't moved yet, so not to a coast spot, and you haven't used a command yet this round, you may also assign a die to one of the four commands on your dashboard. Commands have different die value requirements to activate them. To call in your chopper for an airstrike, you may use any die of any value. To hit the nitro button for a car and make that car go faster, the die must be worth one to three. To make a car drift, avoiding the first slam that it would cause on its move, the die must be worth a three, four, or five. And finally, if you wish to repair a car and remove one of its damage tokens, that requires a die valued at six. If you use a command, you will be able to resolve it either before or after you resolve your movement die for that turn. Remember, you cannot assign a command die on the same turn that you have assigned a coasting die. Movement rules. There are some global rules that are always in effect. Number one, cars must always move forwards along the road. You can change lanes as long as the new space is forward of the old space. Number two, different spaces have different movement costs. Clear pavement and open off-road desert costs one point per space. Muddy spaces have a cost of two. You can enter a muddy space with your last single movement point, but for you to move into a muddy space and continue to the next space, that costs you two points. Spaces with a double yellow border on them are impassable obstacles. They have no movement cost because you cannot move into or through them. Number three, you can move through a space that is occupied by a chopper, but if you end your movement or end your turn on a chopper space, that car is eliminated from the game. Number four, if you move your car onto the same space as another car or a wreck, you lose all your remaining movement points and you must initiate a slam. Slamming will be explained in a little bit. Number five, moving your car into the same space as a hazard tile makes you reveal and resolve the hazard tile. If the tile was already revealed on a previous round, then you simply resolve it when you enter that space. More on the specific hazards later on in the video. There are also a couple of conditional movement rules. If you are moving a car and its trajectory starts on paved road and never leaves that payment, you may use the value of the road die to enhance its movement. Every player uses the same value for the road die as determined by the start player rolling it at the beginning of the round. If you use the nitro command in combination with a move, you add the value of the die that you use to activate nitro to the movement points of the car that you are moving this turn. If that car never leaves the pavement, you may also add the value of the road die. If you use the drift command, you may move through the first space occupied by another car that the car you're moving comes to. You do not come to a stop and you do not resolve a slam. The next car you come to after that will make you stop and slam. You cannot voluntarily drive off the edge of the board or into an impassable space, but sometimes situations will arise where you must do that in order to fill the must move forwards rule. If that happens, your car is eliminated. There are game elements that will cause your car to be moved beyond your control, such as hazards, slamming, and some damage tokens. These effects will be discussed in their own sections. Hazards. If you move onto a hazard space as a result of spending movement points, resolving a slam, resolving a damage token, or any other reason, you reveal, if it is face down, and resolve the hazard. If it's already face up, just resolve it. Some hazards are one shots that are removed from the board once they are resolved the first time, while others stay in play and continue to affect the road conditions. Mines. If you encounter this hazard, remove it from the board and draw a random damage token for the car that hit the mine. Resolve the damage token immediately. Wreck. When this tile is revealed, remove it from the board and place a wreck vehicle on the hazard space. Treat this wreck as a small car for the purposes of slamming it. 
which you have to do when you reveal the hazard and place it. It never moves on its own, but it can be moved as a result of slams, and it triggers other hazards if slammed into them. The wreck is eliminated if it ever takes a damage token, or ends on the same space as a chopper, or is forced into an impassable space. Paved road. Some of the hazard tiles are just plain paved road. The hazard was a mirage. Leave the token on the board to indicate that whatever it was before, now it is now paved road. Until that portion of the road is cleared off the board. Mud. This tile remains in play and makes the space it occupies muddy, increasing the movement cost to move through it to two points. Oil slip. These tiles also remain on the board. The space is now considered paved road, but it's covered in oil. When you enter an oil slick, you move one extra space in the direction that you were moving when you entered it. This is not optional, which means if the oil makes you slide into an impassable object or off the edge of the board, your car has been eliminated from the game. Any hazard token that is removed from the board, either because it's a one-shot or because the board that it was on got cleared away, it is shuffled back into the supply of hazard tokens. Damage tokens. When your car receives damage, you draw a damage token from the stack and immediately resolve it. Anytime you repair a car, you remove one damage token and shuffle it back into the damage token pile. There are several different types of damage tokens to resolve. After resolving a car's second damage token, the car is considered inoperable until it is repaired. Dent. This is the simplest damage. It has no effect to resolve. It's just damage. Skid. Your car loses control and skids one space in the direction indicated on the damage token. If this moves you into a hazard, trigger the hazard. If it moves you off the board or onto an impassable obstacle, your car is eliminated. If it moves you into another car, resolve a slam against that car. Shrapnel. A jagged chunk of metal breaks off your car and flies in the direction determined by rolling the direction die. Check each space along that trajectory for road vehicles. The first car that the shrapnel hits must immediately take and resolve a damage token of its own. Dazed. Your driver has become stunned by the attack. Roll the stunt die for a number. Then roll the direction die as many times as the number you rolled on the stunt die. Your car skids one space in the resulting directions, one at a time, triggering possible slams and hazards as it goes. If you end your dazed meandering on the same space as a chopper, your car is eliminated. If you leave the road, you're eliminated. If it leaves you on an impassable obstacle space, your car is eliminated. Blast off. Your car has become airborne. Roll the stunt die and the direction die once each. Your car flies a number of spaces equal to the stunt die result in the direction dictated by the direction die. You will trigger a slam if you land on another car or trigger a hazard if you land on one. It is possible to be eliminated from the game if you blast off the board or into an impassable space or onto the same space as a chopper. Inoperable cars. If one of your cars has two damage tokens on it, it is no longer a moving functional vehicle. Flip its dashboard over to the inoperable side and turn that car around on the road so that it is facing backwards. That's just a reminder that it doesn't move under its own power anymore. You can turn it back around as soon as you use a repair command to remove one of the damage. If all of your cars are inoperable or already eliminated at the same time, you are out of the game. If it's a two-player game and you are eliminated, the other player automatically wins. If you have three or more players and someone is eliminated, place the finish line at the front edge of the lead board immediately, and the first player to cross it will become the winner. It is possible that before someone crosses the finish line, all the other players will be eliminated, thus leaving the remaining player the winner. Slamming rules. If your car enters a space occupied by another car or a wreck, whether you drove there intentionally, got slammed there, or moved there as a result of resolving a damage token, you must now resolve a slam against the car that you just landed on. 
The one exception to this is if you activated the drift command this turn, and this is the first slam that your car would be involved in. Roll the red slam die and the direction die. The slam die will indicate whether the car on top or bottom is the one that moves, and the direction die tells you which direction it will move one space in. If one of the cars in the slam is larger than the other, the owner of the larger car can demand a re-roll. If they do, both of the dice are re-rolled. So in this case here, the bottom car would move backwards one space, and that would put them on this hazard tile, which would then be exposed and resolved. Oh, it's a mine. That car would take a damage token. When a car moves as the result of a slam, it triggers whatever space it lands on. This could be another slam if it lands on a wreck or a car. It could be a hazard if it lands on a red hazard token or an already revealed hazard. Or it could result in the slammed car being eliminated if it flies off the road onto an impassable space or onto the same space as a chopper. If triggering the new space causes the car to move to a new space, it will trigger whatever is on that new space, and so on, until the car is gone from the board or ends on a space with no other vehicles or hazards on it. Shooting rules. Your guns aren't loaded during the first round of play, remember, but once you enter the second round of the game, your ammo is live, so welcome to the shooting gallery. Any time that you call in an airstrike, or you end your vehicle's move one space behind an enemy car, you will trigger a shooting rule. All your vehicles have a forward arc of fire, meaning that if there is an enemy car in one of the three spaces ahead of your vehicle, you can roll the shooting die to try to damage that target. If you have more than one potential target in front of you, you declare which one you are attacking before you roll the die. If you roll the die and it matches the size of the vehicle that you are shooting at, it takes a damage token and resolves it immediately. If your roll doesn't match your target, you missed. Fortunately, you have unlimited ammo, so you can always try again next time. Leaving the lead board. When a car drives off the lead edge of the forward board, the landscape changes. The first thing that happens is the rear board is removed. Any Hazard tiles still on it are shuffled back into the hazard pile. Any choppers on it are returned to their respective owners. And any vehicles on it are eliminated from the game. The board is flipped over and placed on the bottom of the board pile. Slide the other two boards back to make room for a new front board. Take the top board off the stack, decide whether you want A or B, place it down, and put a random hazard token on each hazard space of the board. The vehicle that moved off the lead board is now able to continue its movement onto the new lead board. All of this usually happens when a player voluntarily moves a car out ahead of the pack, but it is possible that the board change happens as a result of a car skidding, oil slicking, or otherwise accidentally making its way off the forward edge of the lead board. Whatever the cause, the same process is triggered. If a player has become eliminated by this event, and the game still needs to continue, once the new board is in place, put the finish line on the front edge of the new lead board. The command boards. As discussed earlier, there are four command spots on the dashboard of your crew. You may only issue one command per round. And to reiterate what they do, airstrike, requires a die of any value to activate, lets you place a chopper on an empty space on the board, and if it is behind an enemy car, you may shoot at it. While a chopper is in this space, any car that ends in that space is eliminated from the game. The chopper stays where you put it until you either order a new airstrike on a later round, or the board that it's on gets cleared away. Nitro takes a die valued one through three and adds that many movement points to the car that you activate the same turn that you command the nitro. Drift requires a die of three to five, 
The drift command lets the car that you move that turn ignore the first slam situation it would be in. If your move ends your car on a space with another car, you must resolve a slam, even if this would be the first slam of that move. Repair needs a six to activate. You use it to remove one damage token from one of your cars. You are allowed to use the repair command before assigning a movement die, so you can fix an inoperable car and then put a movement die on it and move it. Game end and victory. In a three or more player game, the game ends when someone crosses the finish line. The finish line appears when the first player is completely eliminated from the game. If only one player has any working cars on the road before that finish line is crossed, that player is declared the winner without needing to actually cross the finish line. In a two player game, the finish line is placed when the fifth board is added to the road. Now you know the rules to the base game. If you own the Maximum Chrome Edition or have picked up individual expansions at your favorite retail establishment, you will want to look for part two of this tutorial to help you learn the various expansion rules. It'll cover the team leaders, the big rig and the biker squad known as the Final Five, as well as toxic goo and new hazard and terrain types, weapon upgrades, catching fire, and more. What we covered in this video is fun motor car mayhem, but part two will be pure chrome carnage. Until next time, I'm Steve Tassie, the board game guy. Drive safe.